Hi guys, welcome to the Harmonics Tuning YouTube channel. Today, we are going to quickly run you through the stringent and the meticulous processes we follow while tuning a car. We have a steel grey Octavia VRS that's come down all the way from Kerala for a stage 1 tune and some intake mods. The process begins with checking the car thoroughly to ensure there are no coolant or oil leaks anywhere. Once we are happy with the physical condition of the car, we load the car onto our two-wheel drive Eddy Current Dynojet Dyno and do three to four runs on the stock car in order to ensure that everything is running smoothly and as it should. Strapping the cars on the dyno correctly is very, very important. And we take extreme care to ensure that every car we test is strapped properly. Next step is to put the car in dyno mode, without which the ECU will reduce the power output as it detects that only the front wheels are spinning while the rays are stationary. We use B-Flash to put a vast majority of the Volkswagen Audi group of cars into dyno mode. Next step is to data log the car in stock form to ensure everything is running as it should. Data logging helps us understand a wide variety of issues on these cars ranging from misfires, knock retardation, boost leaks, etc. We load up the monitors that we want to data log so that we can see the live values on the screen. We gradually increase the throttle position in the lower gears to see how knock retardation is on the engine. If we see anything over minus 4 degrees of knock retard and are all misfires, we immediately abort the run. Once the engine is warmed up and the engine oil temperatures reach about 90 degrees, we are ready to do our first data lock pull in 4th gear with wide open throttle. Key things to look out for are knock retard and misfires and always ensure that they are well within the safety limits we prescribe. A dyno run is usually done in 4th gear on these cars from 1800 rpm to 6500 rpm. Once the data logging is complete, we look at the logs to ensure everything is fine. The only issue on this car seems to be the really high intake air temperatures, also known as the IATs. At redline, the IATs are nearly 22 degrees above ambient. The next most important aspect is to check knock correction and ensure that it doesn't cross minus 3 degrees, especially while at wide open throttle between 3500 rpm and 7000 rpm. This is our non-config screen where we enter all the vehicle and the owner's details and also select the rpm input for the dyno. This is our dyno screen and we have all the necessary data available to us like power, torque, intake air temperatures, ignition timing, pedal position, engine RPM, vehicle speed, coolant temperature, etc. The moment we hit the sampling button, shown in green, the dyno starts to record the power and the torque values at the wheels. Once the wide open throttle run is completed, we shift the car into neutral and let it coast down to about 60 km per hour so that the dyno can calculate the transmission losses, thus giving us the crank power and the crank torque numbers. We always do multiple runs to ensure that the dyno figures are consistent and repeatable. The bone stock car made 275 horsepower and 438 Nm at the crank. Now let's do a second dyno run, however this time the video is sped up to 6x to prevent the video from becoming extremely lengthy. On the second dyno run, the car made a little less power and torque owing to the heat soak caused by the stock intercooler and the extremely high intake air temperatures. Once we have the baseline dyno numbers, we install the required aftermarket parts chosen by the client, load the ECU and the gearbox tunes.
Now let's dyno the car with the stage 1 tunes in the intake mods and see what the car does. We repeat the same process as we did with the stock car. We wait for the engine oil temperatures to reach 90 degrees and do a wide open throttle pull in 4th gear from 1800 to 6500 rpm. And we do this at least a couple of times to ensure the readings are consistent and repeatable across multiple pulls. The final part of the entire process is to select two runs, one stock and one tune that did the highest figures and use them to compare the delta. We then clean up the way the graphs look by trimming all the parts where the car isn't accelerating so the graphs look cleaner to share with the owners and on social media. As you can see from the stock versus the tune dyno charts, this car picked up 50 horsepower and 109 Nm of torque. We hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you have any doubts, please do post in the comment section and we will try our best to answer all your queries. We've got a lot of interesting videos coming up, stay tuned for more.